Good morning, RDBS family. How are you guys doing today? It's a beautiful day. We are alive. Gratitude, remember, is a must. Let's see what the news desk has to say before we come back into our features for today. Good morning. Incorporating technology into the commercial and industrial landscape is the focus of the 16th annual Singlesha Taiwan Partnership Trade Show, which got underway here last week. Fittingly, this year's theme also offers complementarity as it lends itself to the fact that the Republic of China Taiwan is considered a leading digital capital. This industrious nation has long been a hub of innovation and a key player in the global technological supply chain, technology supply chain. The Republic of China Taiwan's expertise in, the, in areas such as semiconductor manufacturing, electronics, robotics, telecommunication, and other areas of information technology is of immense importance to the world economy. The trade exposition opened on Thursday evening with a ceremony and cocktail at the pavilion on the ramp Rodney Bay and ran until Sunday, November 5th. The Ministry of Health, Wellness and Elderly Affairs is reporting an increase in the number of individuals presenting with flu-like symptoms. The increase is observed both in visits to the emergency departments and hospital admissions. This is particularly true for children less than five years old. Our surveillance system has been able to identify respiratory sensitivity virus, also RSV, and influenza type A as the two most common viral infection at this time. We have also noted that RSV have been identified in the majority of samples tested. RSV is a highly infectious and common respiratory infection which mostly affects young children but could also occur in adults. Although RSV symptoms are usually mild, some people are at higher risk for developing more severe illness and hospitalization, especially infants between the ages of 0 to 12 months, older persons 65 years of age and older, individuals who are immunocompromised, and individuals with chronic heart and lung disease. The Ministry of Health is reminding the general public that we are presently in the flu season which runs from October to March and as such, everyone is advised to take the necessary precautions to avoid getting infected. The importance of creating a more inclusive education system was highlighted as the Ministry of Education held a graduation ceremony for the Professional Development Certificate course in special education last week. The course was conducted by the Sir Arthur Lewis Community College and the Education Quality Improvement Project, or EQIP. Inclusive education transcends the mere provision of equal access to educational opportunities. Summarily, it extends to the provision of equitable physical access and very importantly, institutional programming, which ensures that all students, particularly those who have been traditionally excluded or marginalized, are afforded a fair opportunity to flourish and maximize their potential. It is recognized though that the development of inclusive systems and inclusive education sectors are quite complex and necessitates multi-sectoral strategies and targeted shifts across all levels of society. Material to this are public sensitization, advocacy, and capacity development. The program is part of a broader effort by the Ministry of Education to develop an education system that is more equitable, inclusive, and responsive to the diverse needs of students, especially those who have traditionally been marginalized, including those with special needs. And finally, a well-known event planner, Shemak Leo, is, the, is condemning, rather, what he says is an attempt to malign his name and character in a video making rounds online. A friend called me and then she told me, have I seen a video? I'm like, what video? Because I don't, I don't really do video, I don't really post or anything like that. Part of it is a video from my work. 
So when she sent me the video, I pull over and then I saw the guy. I find it was kind of very distracting because I think we're in a space now where people are very gullible and they believe everything they hear and then I have a business. I have two businesses. I'm an event planner. I'm like, and then the kind of clientele you keep, you know, you don't want people to think that at the back of their head. I think it was wise to make a statement and say, I am not affiliated in any way. I do not know the individual in the video. I have never seen him. I don't know where he's from. And I do not even know why is my name that was mentioned in the video. Leo says that he has sought legal advice and would take legal action once the perpetrators are identified. These are your top stories. Thanks for watching. Good morning. Thank you very much, News Desk. Let's now take a break. We'll be right back. Um, our first feature, let's tap into something a little bit more serious. Um, November is dubbed the Pre-Maturity Awareness Month. And we went over to the, um, the OKEU and we caught up with Dr. Len. Talk to us about the, the Pre-Maturity Awareness Month. Okay. Why? So internationally, um, there is an Awareness Month for Prematurity every November. That's where we take aside, we take the time off to recognize premature babies, the struggles that they go through to be with us today, um, also the parents and what they go through to endure everything that engulfs prematurity and what um, it entails. Because it's, it's, it's not an easy road for the parents, neither for the babies. So we take, want to take out this month to highlight them and to recognize them. Right. Yeah. How long ago has that observance been in existence? Actually, I'm not sure, but we just know internationally it's done every November. Right. This in St. Lucia. In St. Lucia. This is the first year that wow. we're actually making a very big step into bringing it out there and to go in big with um, Prematurity Women's Month. Uh, Women's Month. Right. Um, yeah. Why, why? Why now for St. Lucia Doc? Have we been seeing an increase or is there, what, what prompted us to really start taking it a little more serious here? Not really an increase, but we just now chose to because there's so much happening recently. We've been going through a lot recently. There are a lot of parents that we know and right now the, the network is, we have networks being formed with parents who, who are premature babies. So we're choosing this time this year to actually highlight them. Not so much because there are more premature babies being born, but because right now the network is more formed. We have groups, we have awareness groups, we have support groups that we sorted out this year. So we're choosing this year to do so. Right. And, and, and it is all in realization. It doesn't matter the numbers. Um, there are people who are experiencing this who would need support at definitely, any time. Definitely, definitely, definitely. We have a group with uh, quite a, a number of parents in that WhatsApp group that we support each other on it. Right. In that group, right. yeah. Um, by any chance, is Owena Didi part of this group? Because she is Owena Didi. She's got the, the, the um, Callum Foundation. I'm not sure because the, the numbers in the group are quite large, so right. I'm not sure. I'm sure she is, you know. I'm sure she is. We had her recently, and she had a foundation which was birthed from the fact that she, she had a, a premature baby that, was, that died as well. So, okay. yeah, she, she yeah. created a whole foundation surrounding yeah, that. I'm, aware of. I'm not sure if she's part of the group that I'm talking about right. in particular. Possibly, but I can't. I can't, I can't, I can't <laughs> that is all good. That is all good. But um, what, what now? We have this Awareness Month. What do you hope? Well, in terms of awareness, yes, you want more people to be aware. Aware. but from the medical standpoint of things what are some of the other things that you have on the cards what what are some of the different approaches you plan to take to um, to make this a bigger a bigger um, a bigger deal moving forward well firstly we would like the public to be educated on the fact that there are premature babies and they, that there are mothers who struggle with dealing with premature babies because everyone has their own struggle. Yes. But we know and we've seen that it's been a bit for them. Um, we also would like to educate the public on things that you could do to prevent or decrease the chance of a premature birth well, or delivery. Is, is that a thing? Can you actually do that? There are things you can do because there are risks that, that, that um, puts one 
at high chance of having a premature birth. So right. we, if you know the risk, then you can help to reduce the chance of that happening. Oh, look yeah. at that. So look at us. some of the risks um, for increased premature, um, chances of prematurity include um, not doing antenatal visits, smoking during pregnancy, smoking alcohol use during pregnancy, infections during pregnancy. Um, if there are parents or mothers who have had previous premature deliveries, mm -hmm. it increases their chances of having another premature delivery. Right. Um, and general not following up during your pregnancy, so all of these increase the risk. the risk. Now a lot of the times, however, the exact reason why there's a premature delivery is not certain a lot of the times. Right. But a lot of times also we can also identify the causes of it. Okay. So just to educate the public on things that they can do to reduce right. the chance so of So in that. the areas that we are able to put a handle on it, let's take the steps. Let step. us do so. Let us do uh, so. I like yeah. it. Right. Let's move on now to in terms of the parents. Um, mm. Well, that's the baby. And the baby has a number of challenges. It, uh, it will have to be faced. But in terms of a parent, a mother, um, a dad, parent having to care for a premature baby, mm. What is it like? Is it a very stressful thing? Do they need uh, more care? Is it a, a, a lot more delicate? What, how, how a parent now, what, what is some of the challenges that a parent of a premature person? So let, let's consider first what a premature baby is. So a premature baby is a baby that's born before 37 weeks of right. gestation. Right. There are different levels of prematurity. There's extreme prematurity, there's very premature, there's... Um, moderate premature. Mm -hmm. Babies who are extremely premature, babies are born below 28 weeks of gestation, they go through a lot. Whenever they survive, they would have gone through a lot, right? Um, so for one, babies born below 27 weeks, they would definitely need us to breathe for them. So they would need ventilation. They are at risk of a lot of things, infection, they are at risk of ble bleeding in the brain, which means that there's a, a long way and a lot that the babies go through in order for them to survive. And so the parents know they have to stick through all of that going up happening. So there are a lot of up moments, but there's also a lot of down moments. So the parents, they endure a lot. There's also a significant financial attachment with that. Because premature babies, they stay in the nursery, they just being in this means that you may use a lot of medication. There's some medications that you have to pay for upfront. For the very premature babies, there's one of the medications in particular, it's called surfactant. Mm -hmm. It helps the babies with gaseous exchange. And the parents, unfortunately, usually have to pay for that upfront. And one vial of that costs $2,550. So this is a medication that a lot of babies that are premature be for 32 weeks, they usually need. All right, so um, that's definitely one of the things that we have to consider and we need them to know. Well, we, we do have people asking about it. We do have, we've been on a few of the talk shows. We've been putting it out there. Uh, we know that there's a need for people to be aware of it and to prepare because you don't know, no one knows that they're going to have a premature baby. So it's important that they are aware of the possibility and that they put things in place for that possibility. I know it's easier said than done, but the awareness is important so that you yourself being pregnant, and not just the mother, but also the father, yes. they make provisions for those possibilities. possibilities. Yeah. Right. What, is, what has been our rates? Do you, do you know what the numbers have well, been right in, in terms of survival? Well, well let's, before that, let's right. go worldwide, the rate for prematurity is around 13%. Okay. In St. Lucia, we are between 12 and 13 percent, yeah, of prematurity. Yeah, oh. so we fall within the the, the, the statistics. Right. Um, I can't give a survival rate, however, um, I can say that we have been able to support a baby that was born at roughly 540 grams. That's like 1.1 kilogram, but 1.1 pound wow. at 26 weeks. Of gestation, um, just for just for further information, normal gestation is 40 weeks. Yes. So we've been able to successfully ventilate a baby who was um, 540 grams and 26 weeks of gestation. That's a long time ago, or recently? That was a while ago. The baby the child should That's be like now, seven or oh, eight years this old. Is amazing. Yeah. Um, oh. yeah As a so. doctor, what does it feel like when you? able to see these um, the survivors, the success stories. To feel proud, I'll be honest, we feel <laughs> proud. Because to, um, 
a lot of times we hear the bad things, we hear a lot of bad stories, but then when we have, when we see that we're putting work into such a small creature, yes. and then that baby makes well, the chances it, were very the slim. Chance, chances are very slim, odds are against, yes. and then that baby comes out and leaves oh, nursery and goes home and, and walking and talking around as a yes, normal sir. child, we feel proud because Absolutely. it's a lot of work. Right. It is a lot of work, it is a lot of stress, sleepless nights because <laughs> no one knows what the doctors go through at three o'clock in the morning oh, when you have a small sick now, baby <laughs> and you have to go yes. take care of that baby. So we feel good at the end of the day. Now we also do sympathize with those who don't make it because yes. we also have a large number of people who, who don't make it. make it and the parents, we understand their, their um, grief. Um, but we feel proud when we do have that success, Absolutely. especially with the very, very small ones. Absolutely. Yeah. Doc, let me, um, I talk, let me talk now. Do you have the audience? Um, what would you like us to, to take away from, from this? Um, that we give support to the parents out there. Uh, we, uh, that we share their joy with them. We support them when needed. And then also we recognize that um, it can happen to anybody. And that we... The, well, the general public in family planning, we have that at the back of our mind that that could be a possibility that we could go through. So, pretty much, yeah, just just to know, to be aware of the possibilities of and premature support, death. And, support, and support, and support, and support. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Thank so, you. Lynn, thank you so much, man, You're and welcome. thank you for your good job that no you problem. continue to do that. No That's awesome. <laughs>Weekend, St. Lucia saw the 16th annual um, Taiwan St. Lucia Partnership trade show. Uh, we spoke to uh, the director of commerce. All right, we're here with the director of commerce. We are at the, uh, the St. Lucia Taiwan Partnership trade show. Um, what year is this, Esli? This is the 16th annual. The 16th annual. Uh, Wonderful. Yeah. Now, this is a, the first time it's been held here at the um, yes, yes. At the pavilion. Um, I'm, I don't want to impose myself on you, uh, but you've been here from since yesterday. It's now Saturday. You're going to be here for the rest of the weekend. What is your thoughts? Is it a success? Are you going to deem it a success? Uh, so far, yes, we can deem it a success. Um, I mean, first of what all, is there not to heading to 16. <laughs> I mean, this is our sweet 16. So, Absolutely. I mean, it has to be a success. It has, uh, would have had to be a success over the years for us to get to 16. Mm -hmm. And so I think this year has been another year where... Um, we are setting new records and um, we've, the, we've seen a lot of uh, people coming in. Our uh, exhibitors are very happy with the turnout themselves, um, with the hits they're getting and how it's boosting their business. Okay, let me dial back down again. 16 mm. years ago. Are you here for that? 16 years yeah, ago? All yeah. right. What was the initial birthing of this and, and you know, um, to have started? How did this all start? Uh, yeah. This was around the time when St. Lucia started um, its diplomatic relationships with Taiwan. Yeah. And so we always thought that, hey, how best to um, grow that relationship by, by um, looking at trading opportunities, uh, becoming trading partners. And so then that, that's the whole idea between the St. Lucia Taiwan Partnership Trade Show, um, where you have St. Lucian exhibitors, um, Taiwanese exhibitors, um, all um, bringing this stuff together. Um, and also they network with one another, looking at trading opportunities, looking at new opportunities for business. I mean, right. you, your friends, you do business with who you trust. And That's so right. if we're looking at that solidarity, that, that, that um, real partnership with the, with the Taiwanese, we would want to trade with them as well. Wonderful. It makes sense. Now, over the past 16 years, what are some of the unique or substantial relations that has come out of it? If you, if you off the top of your head, can just point at a few. Uh, Apart from the fact that every year we hear and persons get to showcase, um, um, you said partnership. Um, you know, creating relationships. Okay. What are some um, things so that may have For example, this year, where our theme is sustaining trade in the digital age, and you know you have the, um, the Taiwanese partners who, Taiwan is at the cusp of um, um, yeah, innovation and digitalization uh, in the world. Um, St. Lucia is still taking baby steps, and so leaning on them in terms of helping us towards that. So that is one thing. 
um, the um, support that, they, that has been given to small businesses um, in terms of helping them to digitize their operation, helping them in terms of um, growing industry as well in St. Lucia. So that is what we get from it. Um, in terms of also our possible trading partners, um, so even uh, next year in, in March, the, the Ministry of Commerce, in collaboration with our private sector partners, we are doing a trade mission to Taiwan. So we are going. Yeah, we are yeah, bringing. So we actually bringing ourselves. Yeah, we're bringing ourselves as well. So it's, it's so it's a mutually beneficial relationship. It's not just Taiwanese products coming to St. Lucia, but also the opportunity for Taiwanese pro for St. Lucian products Absolutely. and St. Lucian services to get to Taiwan as well. Absolutely amazing. Uh -huh. Now, especially in, in the past couple of, uh, of months or probably years, um, the, what's his name? Mr. Cheng. Yes, Mr. Ambassador Cheng. Cheng. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Ambassador Cheng is such, he's a Lucian now, but we can say that. <laughs> but he has been so, you know, in, integrated in terms. Does that make a difference in how we, we, we now see that partnership? Because I think he is just different. Mm. I think everybody is yeah. now rooting for, 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 for Mr. Cheng to, to remain here, regardless of what happens. I think, you know? I think that extends also to um, a lot of the other staff at the embassy. Um, mm -hmm. We work very closely with the um, Taiwanese staff, the mm -hmm. embassy staff, to make this a, a reality. And so even in that, you know, there, there's that camaraderie that, 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 that is growing there. Right. Um, and, I, and I think St. Lucians have seen some of the benefits that we have re-ripped from the, um, the, the whole St. Lucia-Taiwan partnership. All right, so for the rest of the day and into tomorrow, what are some of the things that you hope to see happening? Uh, well, I'm hoping that you guys can take a few shots of some of the exciting booths that are out there. Um, the, the theme this year, as I said, sustaining trade in the digital age. So we have this digital theme where you can see new innovations, um, new, new products and services that are coming out that both individuals and businesses can take advantage of. Um, I love our hologram guy. Oh, let me tell you, that's our favorite guy. We stopped up there last night. We have someone amazing. who into 3D, 3D printing, yes. into robotics, um, IT, into 3D animation and that type of thing as well. So for our younger people, if you're looking to go in that route, come over. Right? And then you always have your manufacturers and everything from food and beverage to craft items to whatnot. And um, we do a lot in St. Lucia that we can be very proud of. And the ministry is always looking for ways and means to showcase that. Um, so apart from just um, um, looking at new trading opportunities with St. Lucians, the trade show also gives our local entrepreneurs a chance to showcase. Yeah, it's a platform to showcase their products and services that, that they that is new on the market and they, they want to get into the mainstream market. So we also I would also want to send a message to come out and support local. You know, um, we have a campaign that we're rolling out of the Ministry of Commerce called Love St. Lucia. All right, and Love St. Lucia is a buy local campaign that it's it's encouraging persons to look at what we have here in St. Lucia. It is competitive with whatever is out there in the world as well. All right? So we that, is, uh, that is part of the trade show. We, we, we definitely, we, we are definitely are <laughs> All right? Thank you so much. All right. You're most welcome. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. All right. It's time to rise, shine, and wine with Soka Size. Leading the wine, we have Serena, Vernel, and Shani. Let's get ready to sweat with Soka Size. It's time to flaunt with a Bacchanal warm up. Let's begin. I know you love this one. We're just vibing and feeling the music. Let's go. Four, three, arms crossing and fan. Fan. Again. Touch and over the head. Roll the hip. Roll. Switch sides. Wind down. Four, four, three, two, up and four, three, two. Take the arms again. Cross and take it over. Side, roll it. My girl, you look very nice. Bumpa jump to let me some cup spice. Stick on you like some Chinese rice. Let me see. We're winding down. And take it up. 
Right side. Let's wind down. And up. Let's work those arms. Find it. That was this morning's session. We hope you are feeling sexy, sultry, and strong. Thank you for choosing to flaunt with Soka Size on This Morning on DBS. And that's our show for this morning, DBS. Join us again tomorrow. We'll be right back here with another DBS This Morning. Enjoy your day.